Hi guys and welcome to Ask a Tattoo Artist. My name's Holly and usually this is my forum where you guys can ask me questions about tattooing and tattoo artist stuff and I answer from the point of view of a tattoo artist except today I'm not going to be answering a question about tattooing at all. It's about mushrooms. So those of you who follow me on Instagram will know that I am quite into foraging. Uh, I have been doing it for about a year and a half, so I definitely don't know all the answers. I'm a complete novice because it's one of those things where the more you learn, the more you realise how much more there is to learn. And that's part of what makes it so fascinating is just how much stuff is out there and how much it all changes with the different seasons. So like I said, I've been doing it for about a year and a half. I'd always been interested in mushrooms and I'd be very annoying to go on a walk with because uh, you'd be talking to me and then you turn around and I'm like 10 foot behind you, crouched down taking a picture of a mushroom. So I've always been into them from a sort of aesthetic point of view. I just think they're fascinating. I'd never really been brave enough to pick one and eat it because I'd kind of subscribed to this notion that anything that you find will kill you and it was all a bit scary. So about a year and a half ago, this idea that you could actually find mushrooms and eat them sort of took hold and became very interesting to me. So I started reading a lot of books. My favourite book and the one that I'm going to recommend is by Roger Phillips and we refer to it as the Bible in our household so if we find a mushroom while we're out and about and we're not quite sure what it is we will maybe take one or take some pictures and bring it home and like consult the Bible to find out what it is. It's an absolutely fascinating book that's just got so much information in it. So I'd say I get my information from a combination of books, reading a lot of books. Um, there's actually some behind me I've just noticed here where uh, these are ones where I've been using them for drawing reference to. Um, this one's by Paul Stamets actually, who again, fascinating writes a lot of very interesting books. I've got a few of his and just all round interesting dude worth following on Instagram. Likewise with um, Roger Phillips who I just talked about because both of them post up videos where you can see what they're doing and I find that YouTube and Instagram is also a really good way to find out more information about it. Because I'm in the UK I also follow the hashtag uh, I think it's foraging UK because then I can keep up to date with what other people are posting in England and it kind of keeps you abreast of what's coming into season and what we can anticipate happening. Quite often things will happen up north and then we know that like maybe a week or two later it'll come down this way and likewise you know sometimes it can go the other way because you know the north's a bit colder, here it's a bit milder so we tend to get different stuff. So the question I get asked a lot is how do I figure out what mushrooms are you know, safe and not safe to eat? And there's kind of not just like one a one sentence answer. You've got to read books, you've got to watch YouTube videos, you've got to, and most importantly, you've got to go out there and do it because there's some mushrooms where you could describe the differences between them and you could look at photos of the differences between them but until you've actually gone out there and looked at them in real life it won't really make sense. I heard a really good analogy, I think it was Paul Stamets actually said it, you could describe to somebody what a cab, like you could describe to someone the difference between a cabbage and a lettuce and on paper it would make sense but as soon as you see the plants in front of you then there's no way that you could get them confused. So I don't think there's really any substitute for getting out there and being interested, uh, being interested in the trees, the different kinds of um, environments that mushrooms grow in because you do have to have a little bit of knowledge about trees. Uh, there's some mushrooms that like a chicken of the woods as a real basic example. If you find it on most trees, it's safe to eat, but if you find it on a yew, then you definitely shouldn't eat it. So you kind of need to know about mushrooms. You kind of need to know about um, forestry and trees and plants. And then that knowledge all comes together uh, to make a more complete picture. 
If it's something that you want to get into and you're just not sure where to start, another really good way to start is doing a foraging course. And I'm going to put here a couple of pictures of people who I follow on Instagram who run courses that I'm really, really interested in and would like to go on. So I'm going to post it here so you can see. I consider myself a pretty novice mycologist, <laughs> a forager, uh, because really we only go for mushrooms that are pretty safe to tell the difference between you can get more advanced ones where it gets more difficult to to be able to see the differences between like a poisonous mushroom and one that's good to eat so we tend to keep it safe and stick to a few main ones where the differences between them are easy but then i say that and it's been interesting this year looking back to this time last year when we were doing it and just the more you're doing it and the more you get your eyes sort of tuned into what to look for how glaringly obvious it becomes between the different species whereas I think when you're new to it it can be a little bit harder to tell the difference so again there's really no substitute than just getting out there and experiencing it throughout all seasons so I was just editing this video and I thought of something else that I wanted to include so me and my boyfriend were talking the other day about how many different types of mushrooms do you think that we have foraged and eaten in the last year or so and I was like, oh, I don't know, 10 or 15. And then we went through it as we were walking, thinking of all the different types, and it was over 30. So I was really surprised. I remember seeing someone the other day on Instagram that I follow saying that she had eaten over 100. So, oh man, <laughs> we've got such a long way to go. Uh, and it's incredible like how much stuff you learn because I think we got into it like autumn of 2019 and we maybe ate four different types of mushroom because obviously autumn is quite good for mushrooms, winter it gets not so good. Uh, we found one type of mushrooms in the winter which was a snowy wax cap. We found uh, parasols, amethyst deceivers, and I feel like we found a couple of porcini, maybe? I can't remember, but it was like four-ish varieties. So now to realize that we've tried, like found and tried over 30, it's like, I'm just buzzing thinking about it. I hope this video has been interesting. I know it's kind of different because obviously it's not about tattooing at all, but it's something that I'm very much into. Uh, if you want to see more of my foraging adventures, come and find me on Instagram. My name there is at holly underscore astral. Like I said, I'm out all the time. So I'm constantly posting pictures of mushrooms. So I guess on the other side of that, if you don't like mushrooms, maybe don't follow me on Instagram because you will get sick of it. Thanks very much for taking the time to watch my video. As always, if you have a question for me about tattooing or about mushrooms, I guess, <laughs> ask me a question in the comments and I will see you next time. Bye.